Cumprimentamos a todos com a paz. The peace of the Lord Jesus. Once again, maybe a few that were not there in Hallandale with us. Oh, wanna, uh, wanna send uh, our greetings from the Church of Paris and Spain, and you need to pray for Krakowia and Poland. You need to pray for them. There's a people there that is in need of prayer. The work of the Lord is growing. And if you think that it is difficult to speak English, go to Krakow and you speak Polish. Uh, I'll invite the church to stand up. Let's read the word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 13. Polish is so difficult that a few from there, they rather speak Swedish. Actually, Dutch, I'm not sure. <laughs> the easiest language to learn is the language for the state of Minas in Brazil. <coughs> Matthew chapter 13, we're going to read from verse 44. 44. Matthew chapter 13 from verse 44. Amen. He's here in the projection. It's very good to uh, be able to deal with the Bible, but uh, it's here in the projection. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buy that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Lord God, Give us a blessing in the meditation of the word of the Lord. We need to hear the voice of the Lord. Speak with us, we plead, we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated, beloved. My brethren, the Lord Jesus, while he was teaching many, he, he was making comparisons regarding the kingdom of heaven. Many had doubts. And Jesus was always speaking through parables and teaching in a very um, easy way to learn. And uh, the majority, the disciples were fishermen. Uh, they were men that didn't know the things. Uh, they understand only the things of fishermen. So this passage speaks also of the uh, fishermen. A man that a man that caught many fish, and then and then at the side of the sea, he goes the boat. Uh, suck the fish and the good ones and throw the ones that are too small to the back to the ocean. I'm used to a different type of uh, microphone. I'm not used to this one. <laughs> it's too tight on my ear. So now the Lord Jesus it was speaking in a way that they understood the message what the Lord was saying. So when they didn't understand the Lord, he was asking, Lord, explain to us the parable. So the Lord explained to them, them in the proper language, the comparison. But then in their majority, 
the Lord spoke of the great worth that a soul has for God. The Lord spoke in a very um, easy way for them to understand and give proper worth to the one who was before them. The word of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven, is similar to a treasure hidden, a treasure is in the field that a man found, he hid there, and because of his joy, he sells everything that he has and buys that treasure. And when man has an experience, sometimes we think in our lives that where we were, how many doors we knocked on, maybe doors that were closed, many who are here, they came from other countries, our church there, the Madrid, we have 16 nations inside of that church, so then we see the people, how they they are doing. They are always seeking a better life. Is it wrong? No, it's nothing wrong with that. Oh, every time that we seek something that is good for us, that's good. But Jesus was seeking that goes way beyond the things for this life. Jesus said here, he spoke of a man that was a, a businessman and he was seeking a treasure. And he found a land, and he with his eyes, normally a commercial has an eagle eye, and he always finds good things. And he found a good thing, and he sold everything that he had, and purchased that land. He made an uh, investment with everything that he had. And that speaks of us, it speaks of our life and our experience how many doors we knocked on before, but one day we found a, a treasure that cannot be measured. We had a meeting with God, and this meeting was a landmark in our lives. A man, who, a businessman, a commercial, he, he invests everything that he has when he finds out that the, the deal is good. When we had a, a meeting with the Lord, we invested everything that we had, everything that we had of most precious, we made an investment with our soul, and the Lord has embraced our soul, and now the one who takes care of our soul is Him. And the text that we read, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who uh, this uh, merchant man is the Lord Jesus. He came and he found each one of us like a pearl, a precious pearl. A pearl should, is, is generated inside of the oyster and it is with uh, great suffering. The oyster you, if you put a, a grain of sand inside of it, it causes uh, discomfort and the oyster works with it and then it produces a liquid and this liquid uh, involves, goes around this sand, piece of sand, grain of sand, and it begins to shine and that's solidified and becomes a pearl of great worth. But in order to take this pearl out, you need to open up the oyster. The shell is sacrificed. Jesus gave his life so that we would be able to come into his presence. And the pearl of great worth here is your life. We found a treasure which is whom is the Lord and the Lord found us as a precious pearl. And He gave His life for us. He died. 
when we were still sinners, He died for us. He gave what He had greater worth, greatest worth on eternity. So that everything that He had, He left His glory, He left His majesty, He left eternity. He came down here to purchase something. God found you, my brother and sister. You may think that you have no worth. Somebody may have told you that you have no worth. Sometimes you may hear this on the street, at work, at home. Maybe your husband has uh, hurt you. The Lord has shown uh, through spiritual gifts in this morning, the Lord has spoken. You may have been rejected by your wife or your husband, by maybe by your father or mother, or maybe by your son or daughter or the children rejected by the parents, but know one thing, you are a pearl of great worth to the Lord. And God, He sent His only Son to die for us. And He came, lived His life here as a man, suffered our pains, He perished, and and he knows exactly what it is to live in this world. And He is now, together with the Father, interceding for us, interceding for your life, because you belong to Him. And when we, we fail, Jesus, our, our attorney, he goes to the Father and says, Father, that one, that one, that's His name. And that one, I gave my life for him. He accepted my sacrifice. And upon his life is my blood. And God hears the intercession of the Son. And God forgives you and he delivers you. He heals you and confirms your salvation. You are, my brother and sister, a pearl of very great worth. We could see part of the great love of God. God moved so many things around. The seminar that we had, a small seminar that we had this morning, everything that God has moved around there was for, for the love of our lives to, to deal with us. The Lord spoke with, God treated the couples, God treated the adolescents, children, and the youth. God treated, with, treated each one of us, and that meeting was scheduled in eternity. Not something that came out of the head of Pastor Ronildo. It was not something that came out of the head of the pastors here. No, it was scheduled in eternity. It was a meeting that was scheduled by God to bless you, to renew you, to renew your faith, to renew the joy in your heart, and to show that you're precious for the Lord. You are a pearl of great worth. The Lord also gave, gave us a spiritual gift. We're going to speak about it later. The Lord has prepared the service here in eternity. There was a meeting in eternity where they scheduled, they put on an, their agenda this meeting here tonight in order for us to hear this message, in order for us to sing these songs. They are not being chosen by the bread. The, the songs were being revealed by the Holy Spirit. This service was scattered in eternity not to bless the people of God, to take care of your life, to visit your heart, to take care of your need. In every service, there is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God. The angels are sent to operate in our midst. And many times you're here, you left a problem at home, and now you're glorifying the name of the Lord. And the angels are ministering your house. The angels are ministering your work. You are lacking work. The Lord is going to open up a door. God has no limit to operate on behalf of those who are, are to inherit salvation. The word said the angels of the Lord are sent from eternity in order to operate, to take care, to protect those who ought to inherit salvation. There is a movement of angels during the service. 
God said the following. Oh, if, we, if you knew the thoughts that I have of you, the thoughts of blessing and not of curse, if you knew the worth that a service has, the worth that a soul has for God, the, the worth that a gathering of servants has for God, there is a great operation of the Holy Spirit of God. In this service, the Lord has already operated. If you entered here, said, the Lord has already operated a, a blessing of joy in your heart because wherever there is a gathering of servants, there is a wonderful manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God. Whatever there are two or three gathered in my name, I will be there in your midst. If you entered here sick, God has already healed you. If you enter here with a problem, and that for you has no solution, God has power to do all things. My brethren, we remember the servants who were in the middle of the ocean, and that little boat there, and the ocean got stormy, the wind, uh, a storm and started gathering, the waves were very agitated and it was they were throwing the boat from one side to another and they thought we're going to die we're going to perish the boat's going to sink we have been defeated and they remembered one thing the master is in the boat and then they awoke the lord jesus and sometimes we forget that the lord is in our boat Whatever two and three gathered, I will be, will be in your midst. If there is a servant in fellowship with the Lord, God is beside him. The Lord is beside you. And they spoke with the Lord Jesus. And one word, he reproached the stormy sea and the wind. And everything calmed down. And they spoke to one another. What man is this that can calm the seas. They, they were disciples. They have been with the Lord for so long and they didn't know who the Master was, how many healings they saw Him operating, lives that they saw resurrecting, men who have been cured, the lame who walked again, the mute who spoke the deaf who heard how many wonderful things they saw and heard Jesus doing how many miracles but when the, their own trial started they forgot that Jesus was in the boat and sometimes it, that's how it is we speak that we say that God is faithful that God can bless that God can protect and they deliver us that God can do this and that. Yes, He does. Sometimes, in my church, in Brazil, in Brazil, two men, God has wrecked two men there in my church. Uh, the pastor started a vigil. We invited a pastor to of deliver a message. Uh, the pastor was, a little, as, was already an older man. And he said, I spoke to my wife that when I die, I, I want uh, the service of a wake service uh, would be in this church because God has already resurrected two people. When our trial comes, we forget that God is in our boat. What kind of man is this that even this wind and the sea obey them, obey him? And this man, that they spoke of there is nothing more, nothing less than the Son of God. This man, the same man is here in our midst, the same Lord, that even the winds and the sea obey Him. He is in your house, He is in your heart, He is together with you. We are the temple of inhabitants of the Spirit of the Lord. The same God has operated on the past operated in our church there in Brazil, has operated so many signs and wonders here, 
He's here. He's in your house, in your home. Maybe in a moment of difficulty, you forget. Yeah, he is in your boat. He's there. Pray to him. Speak with him. He is your faithful and truthful friend. He wants to bless you. If you entered here with a necessity and you have not received a blessing yet, do not leave this place in the same area you entered. We are going to start a, a song in this moment. Speak with God. He wants to take you away from here, transform. He wants to let you live this place with a transformed life, to be a servant of God, to have the assurance that the Lord is with us and that we are no longer servants of the world. We are servants of God. And the Word says that we are no longer servants, but we are friends, because the friend does not hide anything for their friend. Hallelujah!
Glória to God. Aleluia. Glória to Jesus. Ele foi. He went. Vendeu tudo quanto tinha. Sold everything that he had. There on the cross of Calvary. The Lord paid a high price in order to rescue your life. You have a, a great worth to Jesus. Let us stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the name of the Lord. I want to praise you for this eternity. For this return that is being prepared for your chosen ones. I want to praise you because of the care that you have had with your people in the midst of many trials we have been the one who has gone ahead of us the one who has been victorious on our behalf the one who has uh, we praise you because soon our tears are going to be dried up there will be no sadness in our lives There will be only a, a song of joy in our hearts. We praise you for this day, Lord, that's coming near. We praise you in the name of Jesus.
You just need to believe. The Lord has already decreed a victory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the in your name, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed be your name, Lord. Lord God, accept our gratitude, Lord, for the service, for this day of blessings, for so many things that you have done for us, for everything that you still have reserved for your people tonight, for the week, Lord, that is just beginning. How many victories have already decreed to, for our lives? We're ready to praise you, Lord. In your name we say that the great and eternal, incomparable love of God, the wonderful grace of the Lord is Jesus Christ, our beloved and eternal Savior, the sweet and tender consolations of the Spirit of God, be with the church, the beloved church of God, now and until the coming of the Lord Jesus in glory. Amen. Amen, my brethren. Church may be seated. We are here at the disposal. If you desire a prayer, we'd like to inform the brethren with the Lord as a blessing. If there is a couple that was not able to be in the seminar in the morning, the Lord has a view that we needed to pray for you here. I believe if there are a couple there are many couples, no problem. You need to give assistance to the remain. And also the couples that were not there, we're going to pray for you. Amen. And Pastor Renewed, anything else? If anybody desire prayer, just raise your hand and we're going to about it there on the back.